Hi, I'm Max. I'm responsible for analytics products within Elsevier and also the data platform that takes data and actually feeds our analytics products. I'm Adrian Marischal and I'm leading the effort around generative AI on Scopus.com. So we created this tool really to address um, a major need that our community sees on a regular basis and that's the problem of understanding new information. In fact, we found that up to 40% of our users on Scopus have a need to learn and understand information on a fairly regular basis. And one of the challenges that we, those users have right now, these researchers and academics, is coming in and looking at a bunch of search results and trying to find their way around all that content and see what's relevant and what's not. It's really hard to do. When you're collaborating across disciplines, you don't always understand the, the other space as well as you do your own. So again, there's, there's a significant time in understanding the space, figuring out what all the research is saying, who all the people are. And what we want to do is just take a little bit of friction off that for the researchers who are increasingly collaborating across disciplines. Again, this is a decision support tool that not only helps you get to a, a better outcome, it helps you get to a better outcome faster. And that's really important because if you're able to make better informed decisions, hopefully you can also make better decisions about what your next research area is, how you want to talk about a subject, or even explore maybe a very valuable new opportunity for yourself. Especially for those working in cross-disciplinary fields, well, all of that work takes more time. What journal do I submit to? Who do I collaborate with? How do I showcase my work? How do I get the next round of funding? Where's the next role coming from? You know, these are all incredibly hard questions and you're having to solve them and juggle all this stuff in parallel. If you want to explore any new research area, there's a massive wall of academic literature standing in front of you that you need to somehow get through, navigate, learn about, understand the vocabulary. Oh, and to throw in for good measure, you also need to be inspired by it in some way. It's really challenging. But what if we could make that a lot easier? And I believe that's where our generative AI tool really shines in, because you can ask a question around the subject area um, when you come to one of our tools. And what you get, again, is that evidence-based summary that provides you a snapshot, a starting point on that journey, contextualizes your words to the words of the academic literature we are basing it on. One of the things this, this tool allows you to do is really start with a very simple natural query, but then very quickly go deeper using pre-formulated questions, as Adrian was saying. And that really allowed him, with his level of expertise, to explore a topic quite quickly, which he wasn't very familiar with and wasn't comfortable with. The only other feature we haven't talked about is the uh, knowledge graph, or the keyword graph, um, which will be coming out soon. And that's, um, I think we're particularly proud of that because it's providing, I think, what we think is one of the first visual representations of knowledge um, generated directly from these papers and showing how ideas connect together. It kind of gives you a bird's eye view of a subject area. So if there's a whole bunch of terms and ideas you're not familiar with. Now you can see on, in a visual way how those things are related to one another and maybe even interact with them to help further your explorative journey. This tool is not just built for the academic community, it's built with the academic community. We've been talking to our editors, we've been talking to people that we've selected from the community in order to test this tool before we even took it to market. Even now, as the tool is live, we're collecting feedback from users where it's worked and where it's not worked. Um, and as we go out and actually meet, meet uh, the community that we serve, we also continuously get feedback. Where we took that next is we have a fantastic UX um, and research team who are already engaging with users every other day anyways at Elsevier. So luckily we had this huge repository of information of problems that we really understood around our users. So the next step was really trying to understand is, okay, if this is a real problem, is the thing we're building actually gonna help them solve that problem? There was one user session we did that was particularly memorable. Uh, it was a researcher from Egypt. And it was kind of incredible because as they start asking their questions and going deeper into the tool, um, they started to get a bit panicked um, that actually they were going to lose all the information, all the summaries and all the questions they had asked. And I will never forget this because they asked our UX researcher, they made them promise three times during that session to send them everything that had <laughs> um, they'd actually had covered during the session. They didn't want it to end. One of the things that really surprised us is they told us that the information they gained during that one session potentially would have saved them days of work and reduced that to a format of seconds, which is kind of incredible if you think about it.
Our core principles are trust, transparency, working with our community, and the depth and breadth of our knowledge. Scopus was always built on the foundation of trust. So the, the first point where we invest in trust is the curation of the content that goes into Scopus. That's done by an independent board. They have a, a policy, a set of principles that are transparent to the community, and they decide what's in or out of Scopus based on those principles. So curation is a core part of our, of our kind of trust proposition. The second, the second part where we invested in trust is, is it being able to take all of the data that we get and actually link it in a very high quality way. So our data becomes reliable for informing decisions that people have across the community. Another important principle is privacy, and it's at the center of what we do across the whole of Elsevier. Um, there are really two things to say. One is we always put the user in control of their private data. and We actually have a dedicated privacy team uh, and a privacy center where users can go and decide how their data is used in the solutions in, across Elsevier. The second thing to say is we have a sandboxed environment, so your searches don't leave that environment and go into a cloud somewhere. Really, they stay with us. So these are the two ways, I would say, concretely in this, in this example, where we're safeguarding privacy. People told us the tool was fun. Um, and that was surprising because that wasn't really our intention. Our intention was to make, solve the problem and make it easier to solve the problem. But it turns out, actually, if you make that really, you reduce the barrier to entry of understanding a new subject area, if you make that super easy, and you make it really compact in terms of getting a snapshot, that, that's quite engaging for people. It's fun. You could walk out today and you could look up Chomsky and linguistics or microwaves and you can get a snapshot that have an evidence base. And I don't think that was really possible in an easy way before. So maybe before you were spending days putting off learning about a new subject area, maybe it's not so hard anymore. I mean, for me, it's part of it's been the way of working, right? Mm. We've really brought a team together on this that's yep. pretty much coming from all different parts of, of the company. And also the engagement with the community has been incredible, right? All the way through from the beginning of this thing when we thought about it, all the way through to the first launch, and even now, we're continuing to see that through. You know, I've never seen so much and so many people galvanize around an idea so enthusiastically. I think it speaks to very much the potential um, that underpins this. And, being able to get as one of the people, first people in that space is it's a really rewarding experience. There's a lot of opportunity to really go out there, be creative, work with the people out there who are using these tools day in day and really find novel and interesting solutions that we probably just were not able to solve before or we didn't even consider were even possible to solve until a couple of months ago. And that's really energizing.